Welcome, I am Pastor John Larson, and this is the worship for October 14th and 15th of, Oct of, uh, of 2023. I already, I already told you it was October. And this is for Ascension Lutheran Church in Littleton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver, Colorado. And I'm glad that you have come to join us for some music and a message and some prayers. And of course, the word of grace. Uh, we now hear Michael Zender on the organ with a prelude, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Please enjoy it. We make our beginning for this time of worship in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Mike is going to lead us in singing that hymn, Come, Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
loudest praise. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love, teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. Oh, to grace how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be Let that grace now like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it Prone to leave the God I Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Oh, that day when free from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face, clothed in the blood washed linen. How Come, my love, no longer tarry. Take my ransomed soul away. Send thine angels soon to carry me to realms of endless day. It's important for us to ask God for his grace, for his forgiveness, for a new beginning in life. It's a delight, actually, to do this every week and, of course, every day. We join in the confession of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Jesus Christ came as a savior, a redeemer, a sacrifice. Do you understand what that means? That means that he came for you and for your sins, the big ones, the small ones. And he took all of them upon himself. So please hear the word of grace where it says, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. By the grace of God, you're forgiven. May you live with peace deep in your soul. And may you live with joy, knowing God's love for you, you are forgiven. Amen. Well, my sermon is based on John chapter 14, 23 and 24. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. 
He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Uh, Do you know what the fastest growing religion in America is? Well, it must be the Mormons, right? I mean, they go door to door, persistently. And they invite people to come and join them. No, no, you know what? It's not the Mormons. Must be the Roman Catholics. You know, Roman Catholics are known for having big families. So when you add on all of those children in Catholic families, that must be the fastest growing religion in our country. Nope, nope, not that either. Well, how about the mega churches? You know, the non denominationals. Here in Denver, we have a couple of them Mission Hills and Cherry Hills Community Church. So, those are congregations where they're not satisfied simply having hundreds of people who fill their pews, but rather thousands. Wow. No, no. That, that is not the fastest growing religion in this country. The fastest growing faith is those who claim that they have no faith. When conducting religious polls, the question is asked, what's your religion? And one of every six Americans respond with the word, none. Now, there might be quite a few reasons why it is that in recent times here, in this country, that we have so many people who have simply absented themselves from any kind of church. But the writer of an article that I'm quoting from the Denver Post on October 8th of 2023 put put it this way. They really don't like organized religion. And as I'm reading the article, I I see that there are a number of things that would turn me against organized religion as well. So I can understand why some of them left the church. A lady called Marjorie, Marjorie Logman in Aurora, Illinois, ended up in a nursing home following an accident. And during that time, her husband became ill at their home. And she called her church and asked for the pastor to go see her husband. But he wasn't a member. And so the pastor said, that he would not go to see him. The man died, and his widow felt very poorly about how she was treated. You see, the church and that pastor failed that woman and her husband. So when she was asked, what religion do you belong to? She said, none. Another person in that article had this account. It's a man that comes from central Michigan, Elric Jones. Elric had lost his job, and he lost the means to be able to pay all of his bills. But he said this this did not stop the church from continuing to write to him with this question, 
why aren't you sending us money? And he was quoted, they should have come to us and said, is there something we can do to help you? Sometimes churches lose their focus. They forget that they exist as the hands and the feet, the compassion and mercy of our living Lord Jesus. And they forget the primary command of Jesus, love each other as I have loved you. And we, the church, can forget the most important number is not how much money we have in the bank or how much money we can get you to give us. You see, there's a greater number, a greater purpose. Because we exist for something better and higher. We have a greater mission than simply to keep our doors open. Jesus, the very day before he went to the cross to redeem you and me and the entire world from our sins, spoke those words that I read as our text. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. So if I can paraphrase how I understand what he is saying. He is saying, hold on to my word. Grab it. Trust it. Believe it. And let it lead your life. So to speak, Jesus is the one who said we need to be wide receivers. Now, please understand. Now, this past week, a week ago, here in Denver, my Broncos lost miserably to the New York Jets. And I imagine there's many reasons for that. But one of them is our wide receivers did not catch many passes. And any football team needs wide receivers who can catch and run and score touchdowns. And being a wide receiver in a different sense is important as a Christian. We need to be wide receivers of all the grace that God wants to give to us. That, that is part of that understanding of hold to my word. Jesus is the one who wants you and me to receive what he wants to give. And not only for you and me, but also for all of those who are among the nuns who have left the faith. Jesus tells everyone, hold on to my word. In John chapter 1, in the description of the ministry of Jesus, this is what we read. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or by a husband's will, but born of God. The Christian message always begins with what God wants to give us. 
Not what God wants to take from us or demand from us, but rather what he wants to give us. Come to me, he said. All you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Or how about John 3, 16? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then just a couple of paragraphs following the words of my text in John 14, we find these words in John 15. Remain in me, Jesus said, and I'll remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Hold to my word. Hold to me. That's what Jesus says over and over again. And this is where the Christian faith begins. This is always centered in what God has done. It finds peace in Jesus because sins are forgiven, received into his crucified body, and of course, risen again in great glory. But, but this faith that we have is not a private matter. <laughs> it doesn't belong to a few select folks. We want the nuns and the won'ts and the I don't cares to hold to that word, to live in God's love to know the blessings of the fullness of life through Jesus, now and forever. And when we hold to that word, it means that we are going to hold on to love for others with a deep and abiding love. The, those who left the church or are leaving the church do not see the Christian church in that light. God wants us to be that light and that love to all. Do you know what Jesus said were the two greatest commandments ever? Number one, love God. Number two, love people. In our 1030 service here at Ascension, we are learning a new song written by Chris Tomlin and some others. It's titled, Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly. It's based on the book of Micah 6, 8. And the words of the song begin. It all comes down to this what you require of me. Love my neighbor as myself and you above all things. Act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with you, God. In all things, in all ways, walk humbly with you, God. I ask you to do something. Every time I'm in front of this camera, and this week is no different from any other week. Last week, I pleaded with you to pray more earnestly, more fervently, and always committing all things unto God's hand and into his care. Well, today, I am asking you to commit all that you are and all that God has given you into his will. The things that you possess, 
the talents that he has given you, the life that he has bequeathed to you. I am asking you that you are able to say, Lord, I am yours. Some of you may know, because you've listened to me enough, that I play softball in the summer in an old man's league. I imagine, you know, we keep on going like we are, and as old as we are, pretty soon we're going to need wheelchairs to get around the bases. <laughs> My teammates know that I'm a preacher. And once in a while they discuss church things with me. In fact, I've listened and they use the name of Jesus in almost every ball game that we play. But just a month or so ago, two months ago now, sitting having a meal with my team and they started talking about giving money to the church. So one of our guys, he's a rover, which means he's out in the outfield, catching all those balls I pitched that they hit far, far away from me. And he says whenever he goes to church, he throws in $5 into the plate. And he thought that amount was just fine. But I don't. Now, I didn't tell him that. No, I tell you. You can tell him that. It's not the amount. No, it's that it's leftovers. It's the little crumbs that he has at the end of everything that he wants to do. God comes last. He has enough time to do a whole lot of extra things in life but he only has a few bucks to put into the plate. Now, for some people, that's a sacrificial gift. Five dollars is a bunch of money for some, but not for him. Hold to my word is God's word of salvation to us. We trust in Jesus alone, that we are declared righteous in God's sight through the work of Jesus, through his death and resurrection. But hold to my word is also how it is that we are going to relate to others, how we are going to love others and give our life and our means to be able to bless the lives, the lives of other people. Paul boasted to one church about another church. And now, brothers, we want you to know that the grace that God has given to the Macedonian churches, out of the most severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty, it welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the saints. And just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'm asking you, to hold on to his word. Finding the joy of faith and life through Jesus. I want you and I to be wide receivers. And I want you and I to be joyful and generous givers. In Christ's name, amen. We continue our worship now as we offer prayers. How good to pray for the many needs that exist 
including simply the horrors that exist throughout the world, especially in Israel and also in that peninsula around them. So the flowers of the altar were given by Chris and Lolly Valento as they have a celebration of Sandy and Mark Hanna's 15th anniversary. Sandy is Lolly's mother. We have anniversaries and birthdays. We also pray for Stephanie Retcher, our director of Christian education. Her father is very ill in Wisconsin. He needed an additional surgery on his heart this week. And we pray that God's will and mercy is done in his life, David Stockter, and also in the lives of his family. Lee Valdez will have surgery this week on his back. Lawrence Brown is in the hospital with the difficulties of an infection in his leg. We pray for these needs and many others. Lord, you have told us that we are to hold on to your word, hold on to your promises, hold on to your grace, and seek your direction in how we are to live. That we would always hold to your word and what you have done and what we are also to do. Bless us as individuals and bless your church throughout the world that in faith and obedience that we are able to stand strongly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that you have given to Lolly her dear mother Sandy and I pray that Sandy and Mark are celebrating with joy 15 years of marriage. Lord, we also thank you for a number of birthdays, that you have given another birthday to George Heiliger on Thursday the 12th, and that you have given the 80th birthday to Norm Finfrock on Tuesday the 10th, and you allowed Dave and Mary Ann Hawk 50 years of marriage a week ago on October the 6th. Bless these birthdays, anniversaries, and lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that you will give to your people in Israel and also your people in the Gaza Strip peace, that the killing and the terrorism and all the evil that can exist would be guided more by your love and by your ways. Lord, this is beyond us but not beyond you. We pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, I pray that you continue to hold in your hand these, your dear people, for David Stockter, for Donna Dennis, Lawrence Brown, Mary Hurt, Jim Bame, Lee Valdez, Bruce Holub, Jimmy Anzai, Doris Coleman, Mary Kratzer, Lila Lutz, and Crystal Sundet, and for many others. Lord, give them your presence, heal them according to your will, and grant them a sure faith in your hand in their lives. For I pray this all in the name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us once again. And I pray that your faith is encouraged and your life is guided in God's ways. Until we meet again, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.